So here we're going to take a look at the so-called Raleigh number, which is a way of figuring out where and when we might have mantle convection. So what do we mean by convection? We mean that in a deep enough, hot enough part of the Earth, material might be soft enough that it can flow, that it can circulate. So we might have very hot material down here at the base of the mantle, and if it's hot enough, then if we take some little cube of material and heat it up, it'll expand and it becomes buoyant enough that it can flow. It can kind of force its way past material that is not as buoyant. And then cold material here uh, would be dense and would sink, and then we'd get this kind of circular flow-like motion. Well, this can only happen if the material is hot and soft. If we get to the outer part of the Earth, then it is cold enough where we have what is called the lithosphere. The lithosphere is cold and rigid. Lithos means rock, so we have lithos and sphere, so we have a spherical shell of rock that does not convect. It's cold enough where things don't move around. Even though it's very, if it's very hot down here, it's not so hot that the material is soft enough that material can move out of the way. So this idea of convection relates to how heat flows. So heat, we'll call it Q. Uh, how do we get heat from, let's say, point A to point B? Well, we have a couple of options. There, there's radiation, which we think is not terribly important in the Earth. And then there is conduction. And then there is convection, as we've just explained. Convection is this idea of material that can flow, is uh, like water flowing um, uh, in a stream, more or less, although we don't quite mean that. Uh, and then with conduction, we mean that we have something that remains solid. It's not going to act as a plastic or a fluid. And we're going to take vibrations and move them from, let's say, this level here. Let's say this part over here is very hot. And so that hot material, those atoms vibrate back and forth in some uh, fashion. Those vibrations will be passed from this atom to that atom through these chemical bonds. And then as these vibrate faster, those vibrations will be carried through those chemical bonds and eventually it'll, that heat flow will make its way up in this direction. In a sense, the fastest wins. And to illustrate that, let's just delete the, uh, clear the chalkboard and take a look at what we mean. If we have a rigid lithosphere and we want to get heat from point A to point B, if this stuff is not very soft, then you can wait for material A to move up. It might be buoyant, but if the material around it is so strong that this overlying material is, doesn't get out of the way, then you'd be waiting a long time for that material, that hot, buoyant material in A, to rise upward by flow. So in this case, it would instead move heat through conduction. It's easier to move it uh, along those vibrations, those atomic vibrations, as we just discussed. On the other hand, if we have some deeper layer C and some colder layer D up here in, the in, the, in a higher part of the mantle, so here's the core mantle boundary here, uh, if this material in this part of the mantle is very hot, and it's hot enough where the material is soft, then this material that is hot might be able to force its way up to uh, higher level levels in the, in the mantle. And this material that is cold, which will indicate by the same mass but with a smaller volume, so a higher density, it would sink and then we'd set up the so-called convective flow. So whichever is faster, conduction or convection, will win. Now, how do we decide which one is faster? We use the Rayleigh number. So the Rayleigh number is a balance of buoyancy forces. So the stronger the buoyancy forces, then the more likely we would have convection. And then we have viscous drag. And those vis viscous drag forces would inhibit convection. So this supports or enhances, and this would inhibit convection. So the higher the Rayleigh number, then the greater the likelihood that we would have convection. 
and we had a critical Raleigh number, we'll call it RAC, or we'll just spell it out here, critical. Uh, it's depending on how we write the Raleigh number, it can be written a number of different ways, and depending on boundary conditions and other factors, the Raleigh number can vary from 1,000 to about 3,000. Let's just use a ballpark number of about 2,000 for the number, uh, the way we'll express it in a moment. So if the RA is greater than 2,000, then we would have convection. And if it's less than 2,000, then we would have conduction. So what is the Raleigh number for Earth's mantle? Well, let's take a look at the way we would calculate it. This is one of several ways where we have G, rho, alpha, T, D to the cubed, divided by kappa, and nu. And so G is the acceleration due to Earth's gravity. And that's the typical number of 9.8 meters per second squared. Rho is the density of the mantle. The average mantle density is about 4.5 grams per cubic centimeter. Alpha is the coefficient of thermal expansion. It measures how large something will get when we heat it up. And it has a value of about 3 times 10 to the minus 5 per Kelvin. There's no unit on top because this is the coefficient. It's not the actual volume of expansion. Uh, temperature that people often use for the mantle, it's probably a bit too low, but we'll use it here, is 1,673 Kelvins. The viscosity is about 10 to the 24 Pascal seconds. That's a 24 there. And then the depth of the mantle is about 2,890 kilometers. Oh, and we've forgotten the value for kappa, the thermal diffusivity. Kappa is equal to, well, we'll use a value of 5.6 times 10 to the minus 7, and that's in units of meters squared per second. This is different than the thermal conductivity. This uh, is equal to thermal conductivity divided by heat capacity times density. So if we put all those numbers in, we get a value of about 9.54 times 10 to the 4. There are no units here. Uh, if we've done any, everything correctly, then all the units should cancel. And you can see that that is much, much greater than the critical value of 2,000. So if those numbers apply to the mantle, then the mantle should convect. So RA is greater than RA critical. Now, this is just a sample calculation. There's a bit of controversy about uh, precisely the values to use. Other people will get RA values that are greater, so some will get values that are as large as 3 times 10 to the 6. Some people estimate that it's quite a bit lower or that you cannot even apply the Raleigh number at all. But those people who spend a lot of time thinking about mantle convection are in mostly uniform agreement that considering the great depths and high temperatures of the mantle, uh, that the material is soft enough that it will convect, there will be mantle flow, and that's how heat will get from the core mantle boundary up to the surface. Uh, typical core mantle boundary temperature, well, not typical, we really don't know what it is, but it could be anywhere from 4,000 to 5,000 uh, Kelvins. It's pretty warm down there, much, uh, much hotter than the 20 to 30 degrees uh, centigrade that we have at Earth's surface, and so most of that heat from the core mantle boundary moving up to the Earth's surface will be transferred by convection until that material, that hot material, hits the rigid lithosphere, and then from the base, base of the lithosphere to the rest of the way to the Earth's surface, uh, the heat would be conducted by conduction.